Hi guys, welcome back to the Hugh Jeffries video and in this video I'm taking a look at restoring up this iPhone SE 64GB which I purchased back in October of 2018 for a total of $79. It is now July of 2019 and it's time to take a look at this, pull this out of my repair pile and actually do something with it. So in this video I'm going to be giving it a full restoration. As you can see it is completely beaten up and is in quite rough shape. I'm going to be putting a new housing, new battery, new display and a new home button in this device to bring it back into brand new condition as you can see right here. As it currently stands, this iPhone SE is a little worse for where you can see it has no home button which makes unlocking the phone a little bit complicated since Apple removed slide to unlock in the iOS 10 update. However, there is a workaround and if I lock the phone and unlock it uh, using the power button, I can swipe across to the Siri app suggestions and navigate into settings to turn on excessive touch. This will give me a virtual home button, but that isn't going to cut it, of course, so I'll need to replace the home button. This is a 64 gigabyte unit running iOS 11.2.2. It's time to shut down the device and we can take a look at all the parts I'm going to be using to restore this phone. I've got a new replacement iPhone SE battery, replacement housing, display, and home button. The housing itself is actually from a US model iPhone SE, but if you have a look at the video, the IMEI numbers are matching across the two housings. I had this one custom printed, so I'll talk a little bit about that later on in the video but you can see it has a lot of the small internal parts installed but not exactly correctly so I'll have to fix up some of that. Either way, taking out the two bottom screws of the iPhone I can begin by loosening up the display using a pick and then being careful to disconnect the cable before removing the display completely although in my case it's not exactly necessary since the rest of the home button is completely missing. I'll need to remove the battery bracket and disconnect the battery before the display. This will ensure that I don't fry any internal components inside of the phone, so it's a good measure when working inside any electronic device. Now that I'm inside the device, I'm going to remove the SIM card tray so I don't forget that later on when I remove the logic board. Speaking of the logic board, it's time for it to come out. I'll need to remove all of the little screws holding it in there is also one hidden up at the top of the phone, making sure to disconnect all of the flex cables. It comes loose and I'll need to disconnect one last cable located on the bottom of the logic board. With it removed, we can take a closer look at the housings and you can see from the original compared to the replacement, it's missing a couple components such as a few antenna cables as well as a little rubber grommet thing that connects to the microphone and as well as some adhesive is missing on the home button cable. I'll need to fix those along the way. Starting with the old housing, I'm going to remove the camera which will give me access to this little antenna which is located up the top of the device. It appears to be welded to the power button, but either way, shoving a tweezer in between it and giving it a little bit of a wiggle, it did come free. I'll also remove the speaker from the old housing and that's just about it. And that's all the parts I'll be using from this old frame. Coming across to the new housing, I can install that antenna we just took out from the old housing, screwing it back in place, as well as this little piece up the top which I believe is a grounding clip for the logic board. I can remove the speaker and then begin removing the dock connector from the new frame and you're probably wondering why that is, but that'll give me enough access to install that little grommet for the microphone and while I was in there, I noticed that it was also missing another little antenna or grounding clip or something like that that goes underneath the headphone jack. So I robbed one of those off an old iPhone SE dock that I had laying around in my parts bin to use on this SE. With that now installed, I can put back the dock connector into the phone and then install the speaker, which was from the original SE frame, which contains that antenna, which was missing from the replacement housing. With all of the small components installed, it's time to install the logic board back into the phone. 
Now, if you're wondering where I got a custom printed iPhone housing with IMEI number, you can find them online at places like AliExpress and Chinese websites because China seems to have a lot of huge manufacturing uh, facilities. In terms of the quality of the housing, the metal and the paint seems pretty good for now, but I ordered a few of these, they weren't too cheap, and I ordered them all with parts. And as you can see in this video, they were missing a few antennas and parts. Some of them were missing screws and other little components. So if you're gonna order one, maybe just get it without the small parts installed because they don't seem very good at installing them themselves. You're probably best to do that yourself when you're doing the repair. Either way, it's time to move across the LCD where I can remove the backing plate and front facing camera flex cable, which I'll need to transfer across the new screen, which for those wondering is an Apple refurbished panel, which means it is previously a cracked display that's had the top layer of glass replaced and that basically gives the iPhone screen another life. Um, and also you're getting an Apple screen, so it's nice uh, in terms of quality and touch. Moving along to the home button, I can install the new replacement button, so that means we won't have Touch ID or anything like that. I also noticed that it didn't have any adhesive that was strong enough to hold down the cable, so I did just remove the bracket to install another little piece of adhesive, which will keep the button secured inside the device. With the home button installed, that completes the display assembly, which means it's time to connect it up to the device, where I can remove the battery adhesive strip and install the battery. Connecting up the battery to the phone after I've connected the display flex cables, I can install the remaining two brackets and their appropriate screws and giving the phone a good clean in the inside with a microfiber cloth, I began to seal down the device but found that the home button was still not attached good enough because the replacement button didn't have the little cable management screw hole which would have kept it in its position originally, so I just used a piece of adhesive. Anyway, sealing down the device and installing the two pentalobe screws into the bottom means that I can test out the phone and we see the Apple logo, which is a definite good sign. I can remove the protective film from the Apple logo on the back and install a tempered glass screen protector. And we're done. So this is it, an iPhone SE fully restored into brand new condition. This is a 64 gigabyte unit on iOS 11.2.2. I assume it hasn't been used since iOS 11.2.2 came out. That was the iOS version that I received the device on when I purchased it back in October of 2018. Now, if you factor in the entire cost of all of the parts and the cost of the phone, I spent around 130 Australian dollars. Now, I probably paid more for the phone back in 2018 than I would today if I was to buy an iPhone SE. But either way, the most expensive part on this phone was that custom housing with that custom IMEI number on the back. While this SE has regained its home button function, it will never have functioning Touch ID as Apple restricts third parties from replacing the home button and regaining Touch ID functionality. If you're curious, on Apple's website, the home button replacement for the iPhone SE out of warranty comes in at $428.95. In fact, it comes under the same category as water damage. So no matter whether you have a broken home button or your phone is completely water damaged, it's still gonna cost you $430. That is ridiculous. And of course they can charge this because nobody else can fix this home button. And that is something I cannot stand about this and why right to repair is such an important piece of legislation we need to get through. Of course, manufacturers like Samsung are a little bit better in this regard because you can change that fingerprint reader. Companies like LG, I believe as well. So it's Apple doing this. They say it's for security, but if it really is, why is the price so high to get that button replaced? It's absolutely insane. But despite this small flaw with the phone, everything else is fully functioning. However, I probably will be selling this phone in the not too distant future, given the non-functioning fingerprint reader, as I just don't have the need for another iPhone SE, let alone one with non-functioning Touch ID. So this phone probably won't stick around for too much longer, but of course it was fun to do up and make this video. 
And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.